Well, hey, everybody, it's Mr. Schauber. Hey, I wanted to give you guys kind of a, a virtual lecture on this PowerPoint. Uh, and as I go through this early stage of, of uh, the JFK and Johnson years, which you can see JFK's election, his inauguration, and the idea of Camelot, as his administration came to be called, I, uh, I'm going to be flipping through these slides and, and just kind of, uh, like I said, lecturing a little bit and giving you guys a little more information. If you remember, the 1950s was overall a pretty good time in the United States, right? And the economy was overall good, and and people were making more money and had new appliances to buy. And we had won World War II. We were the world leaders in just about everything. Uh, President Eisenhower, Dwight D. Eisenhower, World War II hero, staunch anti-communist, was in the White House for most of the 50s. And during that time... Like I said, life was pretty good for most people in the in the country. Uh, we did have, of course, the Red Scare of communism in the early fifties and McCarthyism, and uh, and but by the late fifties, some Americans became alarmed in perceiving that we were falling behind the Soviets in a few different areas. Uh, one of those was that, first of all, communism was spreading, and that was a constant threat in the fifties. And Cuba had fallen to communism in the late 50s, and Fidel Castro, who we'll talk about uh, in another PowerPoint, came to power and, and immediately aligns himself with the Soviet Union, which scared Americans because Cuba is only 90 miles from Florida. So if Cuba's communist, that doesn't pose good things for this country because Cuba's so close. What if they put Soviet missiles there or other things there? Uh, so that was a problem. We also had the issue of the Soviets had worked on their ICBM program, their Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, Missiles, and theirs were working. Theirs were going up into the sky, and ours were not working. Ours were going up and coming back down and crashing and burning. They also sent Sputnik, the Soviets did, into space, and it became the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth, and we didn't have anything like that uh, by the late 1950s. Also, we sent up a U-2 spy plane 15 miles up to spy on the Soviets, and certainly they couldn't knock us down from that height and yet they did with one of their ICBMs. And so by the late, late 1950s and early 1960s, or as the, as the dawn of the 60s uh, approached, Americans knew that a presidential election was coming and they were looking for a boost, kind of a shot in the arm and something to get us back to number one. Uh, because if we were falling behind technologically, at least, uh, to the Soviets, and communism was creeping ever closer to our shores, this is not a good thing. So in the lead up to the election of 1960, we knew there'd be uh, the two candidates, Richard Nixon, the Republican, uh, former vice president for, the, for Eisenhower, and a young, dashing Democrat from... Massachusetts, John F. Kennedy. In 1960, you can see September 26th, just about six weeks before the election, the first televised presidential debate took place. TV, of course, had started uh, in most American homes by the early 50s to mid 50s anyway, but by 1960, it was being used now in American politics. And this debate really swung probably the tide of the election. Those that heard the debate on the radio, many of them said that they thought Nixon had won the debate, that his answers were better and he, he was uh, more eloquent in his responses. But many of those millions of people who watched it on TV thought that Kennedy had won the debate. Kennedy was young, good looking, uh, charming. He was poised and confident on stage. He gave the appearance of what Americans thought a leader should be. And when the cameras panned in close on their foreheads, Kennedy didn't have the beads of sweat that Nixon had. And then, you know, and people thought, well, he must be better under pressure. He'll be better as a president. And, and Kennedy rides this, this televised debate and the momentum from it to win the 1960 election. Of course, 
In his inaugural address, JFK gives one of the most famous lines of any president in U.S. history when he says, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. This was a time when a lot of Americans were looking for leadership and looking for guidance and direction, looking to get back on top and catapult past the Soviets to be that number one uh, again. And uh, JFK seemed to be the guy that would lead us to that. Kennedy really wanted a few things in his time in office. He really wanted to work on civil rights. He wanted to help uh, with programs for the poor. He really wanted to uh, raise minimum wage and get better housing for people who were disadvantaged. And he did manage to do some of those things while in office. Uh, minimum wage was raised. The Housing Act of 1961 was passed. The 24th Amendment was also passed, which outlawed the poll tax, which is a tax people have to pay to vote. There were still five states using that at the time, and uh, they got rid of that. So he did some he, he did some things he wanted to do. He maybe uh, wasn't able to do everything he wanted, but which president is able to do that? And of course, we know that he was only in the White House for a short time. Uh, and certainly would have accomplished more had he been in there longer. One of the appeals of JFK, of course, was that he was young. He was only 43 years old, uh, the youngest president ever elected. He had served previously in the United States House of Representatives and in the Senate. He was a World War II hero. Uh, a lot of Americans at this time could relate to him. He had a young beautiful, charming wife, Jackie Kennedy. And together, they, uh, they gave this air of confidence and, and being able to lead the country. And Americans fed off this. John F. Kennedy surrounded himself with young people in the White House, young advisors. And they were full of optimism, idealism. And, and his administration later earned the nickname Camelot, because of this, kind of in reference to King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and this, this glorious period of time uh, type thing. And the new frontier uh, is, is what he said America was on the verge of. So with his, with his, his youth and the youth he surrounded himself with, it just changed the perception that a lot of Americans had of this country. We were so used to presidents who were old, people who looked like they could be on money, coins and bills. And he was not like that. And his wife was not like that. And the, the White House became a place, a cool place to be where cool parties were happening. And, and uh, Jackie Kennedy gave the national news a tour of the White House. And it was on national TV. And, and it, it, it was just so different than what Americans had been used to. And it was looked to be a time of great optimism in the United States of America. So that'll be a wrap for this first PowerPoint, and we'll move on to the next one.